When the 259 of James Stewart landed on the Phoenix turf in a crumpled heap, an entire offseason's worth of expectations came to a halt. Cue Ricky Carmichael. The Florida native promptly went out and reminded us all what a truly special rider he is. All of the experience and heart that has helped him to 11 championships and 109 career wins was on display in front of a sold-out crowd in Phoenix. Defending champion Chad Reed earned his first podium of the season and returns to a venue that has been very kind to him. Is this the beginning of another championship charge for the number 22? Points leader Kevin Windham dogged Carmichael Suzuki for much of the race. Did the Honda star give us a glimpse of things to come as the series returns to Southern California? The Ricky Carmichael era has begun at Suzuki, but rest assured, Phoenix was only one small battle in what will be an epic confrontation of the greatest Supercross riders in the world. 250 Supercross from Anaheim is right now. Welcome to Anaheim, California at a sold-out Angel Stadium as we make our second of scheduled three visits here for the THQ AMA Supercross Series and the THQ AMA World Supercross GP. And hello once again everyone, Todd Harris along with Cameron Steele. We welcome back to Angel Stadium. Well, the big news this week, James Bubba Stewart who had that horrific get-off last week in Phoenix during practice. He did sustain the break in his left forearm, but he did have successful surgery this week. A plate was inserted for stability. Now, normally the recovery time on that surgery is anywhere from 8 to 12 weeks, but James has assured everyone around him he will be back much sooner than that. Cameron, for the riders who are here and who will be riding tonight, you got to look to Ricky Carmichael. What a huge momentum boost for him last week in Phoenix. For sure. A huge celebration last week, winning the first one for Suzuki. Three riders are underneath 57-second lap times. That is Carmichael, then Reed, then Wyndham. Everybody else, 58 seconds plus. So that means those three riders should be pushing to the front of the pack. One thing of note, Chad Reed has changed his setup on his motorcycle. Last year, he decided he wanted to try to do something to get a more corner speed. He's been trying it this year. He found it and doesn't like it, so he's changed his setup back. I think he's going to be more in the race tonight than we saw last week in Phoenix. We have got a great slate for you tonight in 250 racing. Before we go racing, it's time to check out the MX versus ATV Unleashed track map. All right, beware of the first corner here tonight. It is flat and tight, a little bit crazy. The whoops right behind it. Everybody getting in there right away. Some people will be rhythming through there. Some people like Kevin Wyndham have been skimming them brilliantly. Look for a third gear area there. Then you got a rhythm section, step on, step off, and then a triple that the 250s are able to do. Whoops, people are gonna be jamming through there. More step on, step off. Look for them to dive inside, going into this triple, and then the flat double into a triple out. It should be kind of tricky. You gotta try to do it every single lap. Another triple jump left turn over the sand area, and then a right off the finish line jump, and that is your MX versus ATV Unleashed track map. All right, thank you very much, Cameron. Well, here's how you get to the main event in the 250 class. Two heats, eight transfer, two semis, 10 transfer. And then race of death, the LCQ, where only two men transfer out. Should be a great night of racing as we take a look at our starting grid. Carmichael and McGrath, not too bad to have those two names in a heat race. Ricky Carmichael coming off a big win, Cameron, of course, last week in Phoenix, and we're just glad to have Jeremy McGrath here. I talked to him in the hotel. He said he's more relaxed than he's been all season. Look for great things out of him. And Ricky Carmichael also do a double duty running the helmet cam. And uh, I think he might be a little superstitious. He's probably going to keep that thing now all year since he won with it on. Look at that shot. Jeremy McGrath on the left, number two. Ricky Carmichael on the right, number four. And the team Makita Suzuki as we get set to go. 32nd board is sideways. 250, heat one from Anaheim. Oh, oh very tight and narrow start first corner. Ricky Carmichael getting there first with his teammate. Yeah. Carmichael leaving no doubt about it as he goes and grabs the whole shot. And this is dangerous time for everyone else. Do not let him get away. 103 right behind him as Cameron pointed out. Sebastian Tortelli also on board the Suzuki. 
And this section, the whoops, and then it comes through and you got to step over the span. A lot of riders clipping it. Clark Styles is the number 46 bike. He's been battling the flu and not been feeling great, but he's in the mix right away here in the heat. Just ahead of him is 57, Eric Vallejo. He comes up short there. It looks like Styles is going to get the pass on him. So Vallejo slides back to fourth, Styles to third, but it's Carmichael and Tortelli one and two, and here comes Jeremy McGrath. McGrath getting into the mix. And Clark Scott Styles had his knee scope, been off the bike quite a bit. Oh! Oh! Was that a park job? Jeremy McGrath has a few tricks up his sleeve, and he says hello to Eric Vallejo. Vallejo gets an up close and personal look at a tough block. No harm, no foul. McGrath still on the track. And McGrath coming up here on David Billman. You saw him working the whoops, and David has been really been working on his fitness. McGrath diving to the inside. Oh, he plays it a little safe. He doesn't try to jump that or take Billman's line as well. So Jeremy McGrath having a great ride out here, currently running in sixth place. Look at this fifth place now. McGrath has moved up, so Jeremy in the top five, and he's getting a run on Billman. Oh, oh you got to be kidding me. Jeremy McGrath riding the Inspire Cameron, and it all started when he said hello to Eric Vallejo, number 57. Now, I don't know, is this a park job? Is it clean racing? Oh, he goes up inside. Vallejo tried to cut down in and tried to get a little tighter. McGrath kept it pretty clean there. I mean, Vallejo looking forward at him, but I, I don't think it was, I don't think it was all Jeremy there. Jeremy McGrath is now in third place. He is a man on a mission. The two bike is moving up and moving up quickly. It is still Carmichael, Tortelli, and now it's McGrath, top three. We almost all forgot about Ricky Carmichael. He got the whole shot. He has about a 100-yard lead over his teammate, Sebastian Tortelli. Tortelli has about a 50-yard lead over that man. Showtime, Jeremy McGrath, and McGrath currently sits in third. Now, remember, we are only taking the top four to the main event a little tighter here in the 250 class. And right now, taking the hopes for Kawasaki trying to get to the main event. Michael Byrne from Australia, the number 26 on the green bike there. He has been battling the flu as well. I don't know what's going on with the Supercross series right now, but a lot of riders with the flu. You saw a rider pull up there, not able to get that triple. So Michael Byrne closing in on number 12. David Villeman. David Villeman takes a hard look behind him as he goes over that triple. Knows what's coming in. Michael Byrne and Byrne, number 26, on board the Kawasaki, closing in quick. Remember, we've only got eight laps in this one in the top four from the main. And Cameron, on a night like tonight, when you know it's going to be fast, no one wants to go through a semi. For sure. And also, the one thing to point out is that Michael Byrne is not necessarily known for his, you know, going for it on the passes. And on this track, you really need to be aggressive when you have an opening in the corner. So he slid back just a little bit now. They're all fighting for the top four positions right now. Number four, Ricky Carmichael is your leader. 250, heat number one. Will Villeman hold on to the final position? Stick around. Welcome back to Angel Stadium and our cameraman, Ricky Carmichael. Not bad to have the greatest Supercross racer ever and pretty darn good ESPN2 cameraman as we are on 250. Heat number one, Ricky Carmichael got the whole shot and now he's going to the whoop section camera and no one's even near it. What's crazy about that whoop section, it has that riser in the middle you have to get over. Ricky just doesn't even slow down one bit, it doesn't look like. Just attacking at all times, taking inside of the corners, apexing them perfectly. That's what a champion's all about. A lot was made of Ricky's celebration last week in Phoenix, but you got to remember that is RC's first Supercross win in nearly two years and Suzuki's first Supercross win since 1999, so he definitely had reason to celebrate. 250, heat number one, Ricky Carmichael is your leader. We are going eight laps, one through four to the main event. Jeremy McGrath has been running a very strong third. Sebastian Tortelli currently running in second. And a great run for Sebastian. I've been talking to him quite a bit about his four-stroke. And he's been telling me, the more I ride it, the more I like it. It is smooth, it's good for my style, and he feels really comfortable on the motorcycle. His mechanic, Tony Berluti, one of the best in the business. Good to have him out here working with Sebastian Tortelli. And what a team, Team Makita Suzuki has put together with Roger DeCoster pulling the strings. You see Jeremy McGrath coming into view behind him is David Villeman in the fourth and final transfer position. 
But look at Jeremy, currently running third camera with some extremely fast lap times. He said he wasn't sure what to expect when he got to the main event, what 20 laps would be like. He said he was actually a little unsure of himself when he got there. He says, this week I'm ready to do more racing. I've been doing more 20 lap motos. I've been working towards racing 20 fast motos. He said also, he's gotta go fast early and not lay out just a bit. He said he, he, said he rested up a little bit too early. Number 12 is David Villeman on board the Yamaha. Good to see David Villeman running well. I know a lot of people question his fitness, but right now he looks extremely good as the white flag is out for that man. Ricky Carmichael and the rest of the field here in 250 heat number one from Anaheim, California. One through four to the main event. Ricky Carmichael, the team Makita Suzuki Racing Bridgestone ride, also riding for Fox and Oakley, and Carmichael has been nothing but stellar. And you've seen him race fast as well. And one of the reasons, there's that triple. How's that kink when he hits it? I mean, you can just see that headshot there. The fastest heat race, the winner, <laughs> looking over in the crowd, gets the first pick on the gate. That's why he's racing as fast as he can back to that finish line. Your winner, 250, he won, Ricky Carmichael. So he backs up his win last week in Phoenix, and Carmichael is ecstatic about this one. And I'll tell you what, Roger DeCosta and the rest of Team Suzuki are saying, glad we got him under our tent. 250, heat number one from Anaheim goes into the books. Your Rocky Mountain MC results look like this. It's Ricky Carmichael, Sebastian Tortelli, Jeremy McGrath, and David Villeman all transferring on to the main event. Right now, let's send it down to Jamie Little. Well, Todd, you called it. You said Ricky Carmichael has a master's in domination, and yes, he does. Ricky, with domination comes perfection in you and your bike, and I know week in and week out, you guys have to set this thing up for the certain tracks. How much work do you put in each weekend? You know, we put in a lot. Uh, you know, with the competition the way it is these days, you have to feel really, really comfortable, and, uh, you know, that's what myself and Suzuki are doing. Uh, we had a really good heat race tonight, and, uh, you know, looking to do the same thing in the, in the uh, main event. Yeah, good heat race for Ricky Carmichael. Easy for him to say. We'll see him in the main. Guys? All right, thank you very much, Jamie. Congratulations to Ricky Carmichael. We now welcome in Denny Stevenson, who'll be joining us in the booth while Cameron's off at Moto X at the X Games. Denny, welcome to Supercross. Your thoughts on Ricky Carmichael? Man, I'll tell you, I literally bet against Ricky those first two rounds, and I'm a little lighter in the wallet because of it. I I've learned a lesson. You do not bet against number four. He's a legend. He's a god in a sport for a reason, and I won't be doing that mistake again. Well, there's a couple guys that would like to bet against him. The 22 of Chad Reed, the 14 of Kevin Wyndham, both who are coming up in this next heat. Chad has been very fast, but Wyndham and the whoops has just been scary all weekend. Yeah, no question about that. 250 heat number two coming up next, but first, Jamie Little in the pits early Suzuki strategy. Most riders will tell you that their strategy to winning a Supercross race is getting the whole shot. Thanks now to a new product over the last couple years, it's now easier for riders to get that whole shot. And here now with us is Ricky Carmichael's mechanic, Mike Gosler. And Mike, I know you've been around a long time and you know back in the day how difficult it was for a rider without a device like this. Tell us what this does. Yeah, it's a pretty simple device. The device, all it does is when you push this button here, it locks into this ring, keeping the front end locked down. And uh, as they come over the starting gate, it disengages and the bike's back in its normal ride position. And what it does is just, it just makes it easier to keep them from wheeling and having to pull in the clutch because the bike's wheeling and they can drive forward uh, without having to have too much body movement. Now, is this something that riders can adjust to their liking? Yeah, it's uh, really easy to adjust. I mean, if you position this piece lower on the fork guard, obviously it holds the front end down a little bit further and uh, puts more weight towards the front of the bike, keeping it from wheeling. And uh, Ricky doesn't use a lot of it. Uh, his, his effect is a lot less than most riders. He doesn't have a, a whole lot of uh, weight on the front end. Well, it certainly worked for Ricky Carmichael last weekend in Phoenix. That is your Suzuki strategy with Mike Gosler. Heat number two as we take a look at the starting grid. There's Kevin Wyndham, number 14. Number 13 is Heath Voss, the defending THQ World Supercross GP. Starting grid is the 32nd board, goes sideways. Denny, this should be a great race. Glad to have you with us as they go to the first turn. Kevin Wyndham had the inside line, but it doesn't look like he's gonna be able to hold it. It's number 22, the Thunder from down under Chad Reed. Chad Reed, Reed with, I'm sorry, oh, Denny. Somebody you would not expect to be ninth in the points right now, 20 points down. He's looking to sit, make a statement in this heat race. Well, right behind him is Kevin Wyndham. This could be a great battle. Number 13 is Heath Boss currently running in third place. Remember, we are going eight laps, one through four to the main event. And we'll see what Kevin Wyndham has for Chad Reed. And as Cameron Steele say, he played nice right there. 
He definitely didn't. He saw Chad pick his foot up really quickly, trying to get it out of the way. Didn't want to get it smashed into. And you saw a mistake there from Kevin with him. Denny, he missed that section. Didn't get it the way he wanted to. That's going to give Chad a little bit of breathing room. Yeah, you don't want to get give Chad any gap. You know, the more he opens up a little bit, the more he's get more confident. And I think that's something he needs right now in this series is confidence because he's lacking it. Yeah, no question about that. Chad Reed is a dangerous man with an overdose of confidence. He is your leader right now. 250 heat number two, Kevin Windham number 14 on board the four stroke. Currently sits in second place. And then it's Heath Boss and Ernesto Fonseca right now in the transfer position. Now this is a tricky spot, Denny. That jump, a lot of the riders we're talking about, it almost catapults you straight up. You grab the brakes and almost initially. Yeah, it's an old school double jump. It's something big and like Cameron said, they come in real hard, they gotta hit the brake and slow her down. And the onboard there from Heath Boss. And Heath is a rider that has been charging so much as of late. He's, he's been saying, I've been going as hard as I can. And what that leads me to believe is he's looking for just that little bit extra in the tank, but at the same time, he may be worrying about pushing a little too hard and maybe over the edge, Denny. Yeah, but how about Heath? Got fifth place last week in the Phoenix. You know, Yamaha kind of took a chance when his ride fell through, and man, he's delivering right now. Here's the shot in fourth place right now. That is the final transfer position, number 24, Nesto Fonseca. Originally out of Costa Rica, now living in Southern California. And here's a guy who's carried the weight of Honda for a long time, then he had the knee surgery, so it's good to see him back and riding. Something to know about Ernesto Fonseca, he says his heel is killing him. He put it out at the, at the last race, and it, he injured it, but he didn't injure it so bad where he can't ride, but when it touches the ground, it drives him absolutely bananas. And that's gotta be frustrating. You know, we saw Ernesto come out of the season really strong last year, and he goes down, tears up his knee. He's just trying to come back and make a point and, and, and do a good job for this Honda team. He is the 1999 AMA Rookie of the Year, and he currently sits in fourth place, which is the final transfer position in a very comfortable position as this is the battle for fifth, number 33 coming through, but your leader right now is Chad Reed. And we talked with Chad earlier, the disappointment that Denny Stevenson talked about definitely played on him, but Chad Reed would like to correct it all tonight in Anaheim. Uh, you know, the first two races are definitely being an oddball one for me. You know, if I had to, you know, get asked me at the beginning of the season, how would I like it to start? It certainly wouldn't be the way it happened. And, uh, but, you know, the other cards are being dealt and and uh, I'm just, you know, willing to put the ass in and work that it, it takes to, you know, bridge the gap and, and trying to, uh, you know, win the title. That's, you know, that's the ultimate goal of the is to, uh, just to win the title and just to, you know, do my best and, and try and, you know, get some points. This is definitely something that you touched on, Denny. Here's a guy who's in such need of confidence because that sound bite, almost in his body language, he just seems not demoralized, but he's a man in need of a victory. He seemed a little deflated there, and it, it, for him to be the, the range Supercross champion, I mean, that, that's, that's got to be tough. And ninth overall on the points, what a disappointment. No question about that. Chad Reed, number 22, out of Australia, currently living in Southern California on board the Yamaha. He is your leader, 250. Heat number two of big dose of confidence for the Thunder from down under. When we come back, we'll wrap up 250. Heat number two, can Chad hold on, or will Kevin catch him? Stick around and find out. Welcome back to Angel Stadium, Anaheim, California. You are looking at Kevin Windham, and no, the race is not over. 250 heat number two has come to a rapid conclusion. And Cameron, this is what happened. This is a horrific get-off for Kevin Windham in a very difficult section. We talked about how fast he's been going through the whoops, giving him. They bit him. Nose drops in over the bars, hands out, and then he's tackled by the motorcycle. Anybody that rides a dirt bike knows that 230 plus pounds chasing you down at speed is not a good thing. And Kevin looking a little winded there. And Kevin's one of the biggest guys out there, and he just got punished by that 450. We saw earlier that Chad was kind of jumping through the whoops. Kevin blitzed him, dropped the front end of that 450, and just punished him. And how ironic that Kevin Windham had just posted the fastest lap time, the lap prior to that going down. Well, your leader right now is that man, number 22, Chad Reed, and he looks very good. Heath Boss has now moved up to second. Ernesto Fonseca in third, and T. Evans, Tyler Evans, number 47, Cameron, currently sits in the fourth and final transfer position. And you're looking at Tyler Evans and Nick Way getting by right there. That is the transfer position battle. And, and Tyler, we saw go down last week. He was hurt. He had a sternum injury. His ribs are a little sore. Said he uh, 
They've been working through it, but it's been very painful. Tyler Evans out of Corona, California, the Suzuki RM250. Evans Entertainment Group, and he is back and forth with Nick Way. And Nick Way, a guy out of Michigan who has been an amazing revelation. He has been on fire, and his lap times in practice put him the fourth fastest rider. He has been looking very smooth here on this Anaheim track, Danny. Yeah, well, will someone give this guy a factory ride? Yeah, That's really. got to be the biggest injustice in our sport right now. Nick Way being a privateer. He's done an outstanding job with this new team, and uh, I just like watching Nick ride. I'm a big fan of Currently, Tyler Evans has slid to fifth place. He is behind Nick Way, and Nick Way, the way he's riding, he is opening up a gap on Tyler Evans. So Nick Way in the fourth and final transfer position. It looks like Tyler Evans, if he doesn't get this thing turned around, he's going to be going to semi number two. Well, let's talk about Kevin Windham right now, the points leader. He's not on the track. Yeah, That's, that's huge. And talk about somebody who, who thrives on confidence. You know, when his confidence is low, it's an all-time low. And I'd be really excited to see what happens in the semifinal. And a lot of riders talk about you never know what Kevin Windham you're going to get because he's been the fastest in the, and he's done so much. Sometimes he doesn't, but he's been consistently on his game as of late. But right now, like you said, Danny, I mean, that could just really crush a guy. Chad Reed right now riding high. The Thunder from down under 22 gets the whole shot, goes out in front. And this is the Chad Reed I think everyone expected to see in Anaheim and Phoenix. And it's good to see him riding like we know he can. One thing to note about Chad Reed, we talked about the bike changes. He should be able to slide back into a more comfortable riding style. This is the way, or oh, oh, oh. talk about comfortable doing the knack knack. He has changed up the geometry of the motorcycle to give him a better feel like he had last year for the turning. Chad Reed, your winner, 250, heat number two. Good to see Chad pick up the victory. He will transfer to the main event as we go on board with our cameraman. He's Voss running it for us as he brings it around. And Voss having a great run, taking advantage of Kevin Windham going down and going down hard. And Heath Voss will go in second place, transferring to the main event. 250, heat number two complete. And it's Chad Reed, number 22, the defending champion from last year who picks up the victory followed by Heath Voss, Ernesto Fonseca and Nick Way getting the fourth and final transfer position we sit it down to the track and Jamie Little well it's good to see a smiling Chad Reed back up on the podium Chad last week in the main it looked like you just couldn't reel in Kevin or Ricky but this week things are different you said I have more confidence definitely you know we worked real hard this week and uh you know, it's credit to the team and, and the people around me. You know, it's uh, things have definitely not started off the way that I really expected to ch you know start off. But uh, you know, we're there, and uh, it was good to get a podium. But you know, it's, it's nothing sweeter than a win. And you know, uh, I'm, I'm happy to get up here and get a hit wheat race win. And just uh, you know, all the people sticking by me, all the guys at Ants Mobile, Etnis, Thor, Putz, and Yamaha. I'm just happy to be up here, and the guys at Scott are keeping my eyes good, so I'm happy. All right, obviously his confidence is back, doing a little knack-knack over the triple. Guys? Chad Reed is in, and here was the action from 250 semi-1. It was the battle of the mics. Michael Byrne and Michael Larocco going at it. Here are your GameStop 250 semi-1 results. Michael Byrne getting the win. And the Thor 250 semi-2 results look like this. It's Wyndham's victory. Samsung Wireless 250 LCQ results. Eric Vallejo on top. Coming up the crescendo of our two-hour block of Supercross. All the chips are in. It's the 250 main when we come back. Welcome back to Anaheim, California for the THQ World Supercross GP and the THQ AMA Supercross Series from Angel Stadium in Southern California on a picture-perfect night as we get set for the 250 main event. Todd Harris along with Cameron Steele and Jamie Little, and we have got a great crowd here, Cameron. Once again, a sellout in Anaheim. No surprise there. Definitely not. I mean, the fans here in Anaheim are rabid fans ready for a big race. Right now, we sit it down to the track and Jamie Little. You often hear us talk about our athletes in motocross and supercross being world class. Well, to prove our point, look at these stats on Chad Reed. Perhaps the most impressive is the fact that in a 20 lap main event, his heart rate gets up to about 185. That's right there with Lance Armstrong from the Tour de France. He's truly a world class athlete, and he's our rider profile. This year I had a lot of options, a lot of, uh, a lot of possibilities, and uh, I know what bike works for me. I know what bike's the best bike for Supercross, and uh, you know, I, I signed on the dotted line what I felt was going to win me the title. And I'm really happy with the, the team at Yamaha. They were extremely hard and a great bunch of people to be around week in, week out, and uh, 
So these people are my family. You, know, you, you race so many times a year. You know, they become you know, the people that you regularly hang out with every weekend. So uh, to have that, you know, close friends and, and a great company to have. Our uh, goal is ultimately to be in uh, Vegas and uh, be the champion. There's so many good guys, there's going to be a battle every weekend. And you've got to be prepared for that. And, and, and the full time. Ultimate competition for me this year, I think, is the track every weekend. You've got to be motivated. You've got to be uh, prepared to, to put when you last to do it. You know, I think if I can do that week in, week out, be, uh, be happy at the, be at the races, excited, and, uh, and be sharp, I think uh, you know, I can be the champion. Well, Chad Reed, certainly a world-class athlete. As we take a look at our Suzuki starting grid for the 250 main event. Carmichael's there, winner last week, the defending champ Chad Reed, and Jeremy McGrath, just happy to have him here. But hey, I'll tell you what, Cameron, in the heat race, he looked awfully good. Definitely did, and I wouldn't be surprised to see him fighting it out for that top five, maybe even looking for a podium. Cameron's keys look like this. Race the corners. Come on, get on it. Protect your line. People are going to be sneaking inside all the time, and be consistent on the obstacles. If you're going to triple something into a corner every time, you got to do it perfect. 30-second board is sideways. 250 main from Anaheim. Getting a great jump, but Carmichael's right there as well. And Chad Reed sandwiched in between them. And Reed having to let up just a little bit to play it safe, but he's on the inside line here on, on Carmichael, but he isn't able to do that obstacle. And Carmichael gets a breath of fresh air. Michael Byrne comes in, so it's the American out in front of two Aussies chasing him. Ricky Carmichael picks up the Butterfinger Chris Bullshot Award. And this is watch out time for the rest of the field. Do not let RC get away. We talked about it before. He's got a master degree in domination. Looking for the PhD. Well, Chad Reed makes quick work finally getting by Mike Byrne there. But Jeremy McGrath is also in the mix there. Chad Reed needs to make a move to get up right behind Ricky Carmichael as quickly as possible and get this battle going 20 laps. Well, 19 now. An all-star lineup as Ricky Carmichael leads them through the green flag lap. Chad Reed's in second, Michael Burns in third, and here comes Jeremy McGrath as we go on board with Ricky Carmichael running the helmet cam. That's the double where you see guys have to slow up to hit it. Watch for riders diving in inside. Look at the triple into the corner for Carmichael. Well, if you're Chad Reed Cameron, you could not have asked for anything better. You've got Ricky Carmichael 10 feet in front of you. It's now time to put up for Chad Reed. We know he has the speed. We saw it in the heat race. Can he pull the trigger? Well, he's definitely pulling up on Carmichael. And let's watch for Reed to look for different lines. Remember, they're going to want to try to scrub speed and stay as low as possible, get as much drive. Remember, race the corners in and out. Race off of every obstacle. That's what these two guys are so good at doing. It's Carmichael and Reed out in front, then Byrne, the Jeremy McGrath in fourth as he takes a look behind. But it is Ricky Carmichael taking it through the start finish one more time. Cameron, if it comes down to fitness, as you pointed out, it's a 20 lap race. This is a dead heat. Ricky Carmichael may train harder than anyone else. And Chad Reed is in incredible shape, as Jamie reported. This is the battle now for third place. Michael Byrne going through. And there is Jeremy McGrath. I talked to him in the hotel. He said he's the most comfortable he's been all year. Diving inside, but not able to get that obstacle for McGrath. That's going to cost him. Here comes Villeman on the outside, but McGrath's not going to give up the line. Jeremy says he has to race as hard as he can longer in the main event. He let up a little bit early in the main event in Phoenix, meaning he could have got more positions had he been charging a little bit earlier in the race. For a guy who's been away from the sport, for Jeremy McGrath to be on the podium, it would be absolutely huge. I know the fans here would love it. McGrath can run for mayor of Anaheim and win no contest. But Jeremy right now running for third, trying to run away from number 12, David Villeman, on board the Yamaha. So he takes a look over his left shoulder. Billman sneaking around. Now David Billman, another guy that's watching his fitness level, and he has certainly stepped it up. Well, Jeremy McGrath smart about protecting his lines. David Billman, no stranger to winning Supercrosses either. It's been a bit for him, though. But I look for these two guys. They have the speed. We've been watching lap times. As you can see up there in the top right box, the leader. But these two guys have had very close lap times and have been looking good all over the track. Well, in 1996, McGrath won 14th Supercross events, the most dominant Supercross performance in the sport to date. And there you see Michael Byrne in third. Number two is McGrath in fourth. Number 12 is Villeman, right now running in fifth. And out in front in the box, right-hand side is Ricky Carmichael. His lead over second place, Chad Reed, is about, oh, a 
precarious one and a half seconds of Chad Reed right now is just shadowing Carmichael. The question is, Cameron, fitness, it's got to be a tie. One of these guys is going to have to make a mistake or he could go down just like this to the finish. For sure. And the Supercross track has been breaking down a little bit. There's some edges that keep popping up in some areas, but for the most part, an excellent track to race. The battle doesn't get much better. I guess we can factor in James Bubba Stewart, and that would mix things up just a little bit more. James recovering from a break in his arm last week in Phoenix, had surgery. It would be great to have him here, but right now we want to wish him well and healing. And here comes Chad. Oh, and Reed down. is down. Reed hits just clips the top of that, Cameron, as he was blitzing through that whoop section. He clips it, gets the bike started on one kick, but he loses a whole bunch of time to Ricky Carmichael, and he's got an issue on the left handlebar. Unbelievable turn of events. We'll step aside, take a break, regroup. We come back, replay of Chad Reed, and we'll see if he can catch up with Ricky. Welcome back to Angel Stadium. It's the THQ World Supercross GP and the THQ AMA Series, and that is Jeremy McGrath getting the pass on Michael Burns. So McGrath moves up another position. He is sitting in third place, a podium position. An unbelievable turn of events as McGrath now sits in third. Chad Reed is ahead of him in second, and Ricky Carmichael has checked out. He has about 11-second lead on Chad Reed, who right before we went to commercial break had his problems in the whoop section, Cameron. He just flipped the top of it, and it really just changed the whole dynamics of this race. We talked about if he made a mistake, it would have been really maybe the change of the whole race. But Reed is out in front, and Chad made a mistake. Let's first look at Jeremy McGrath's pass on Michael Byrne. Well, McGrath's won here eight times, and this is going over the finish line. Jeff, he's already actually got the pass. He looks over, sticks to the inside, doesn't go really wide, but they played it safe. Look at Reed. He flipped one of the whoops, and they tried to jump up and over. Had to throw the motorcycle away. He gets away cleanly, but the, you see the lever going down there. It's actually his clutch lever on the left side he was, he was pounding on. And... Wow. So Chad Reed mounting up again, trying to get those lap times down and catching Ricky Carmichael. Before that crash, he had the fastest lap time. It was unbelievable. He was closing on Ricky, almost like he was mirroring Ricky's line and then looking for his chance to pass. But it's one slight mistake. This is so close on speed and time. These guys are phenomenal, and one mistake can really throw it all away. Ricky's lead now, Cameron, up to 12 seconds. Well, we talk about the Chad trying to adjust his clutch lever, just pounding it up. They make it so they can move around and so they don't break off. So that's the good news. The bike is still in working order and more battling here. This is the battle for fourth place. We'll give you a quick rundown. It's Carmichael, Reed, McGrath, and Bird, and then David Billiman sitting in fifth. And we are not even halfway through the race, folks. This is the 250 main from Anaheim, California. Carmichael got the whole shot, had a great battle through with Chad Reed. They were going 1-2. Chad Reed went down, then Jeremy McGrath made his move from sixth to fifth. Now he sits in third, and you are looking at number five, Mike LaRocco. LaRocco sits in sixth place right now. Actually, with the new timing going there across what, the yep. start line. In fourth place is Mike LaRocco. So Michael Burns slipping back just a little bit. And David Villeman continues to try to push. He just hasn't been able to make any ground. In fact, he lost quite a bit of ground there to Mike LaRocco. But these two guys seemingly staying very similar, Burns and Villeman. Well, we are almost at the halfway point of the 250 main event from Anaheim, California, our second of three visits to this wonderful venue. And you are looking at number two, Jeremy McGrath on the left. Number five is Mike LaRocco. Now, LaRocco's lap times are coming down rather quickly. And here's where Jeremy really has been focusing. I talked to him about his fitness level. He said he's been training hard, getting ready for this race. Cameron, can he turn another 10 fast laps like he did in the first 10? That's the question mark. I mean, on the back of Jeremy's helmet, it says part time instead of show time. And right now, it looks like LaRocco's going to get him in the whoops. No question, LaRocco's fitness. Mike LaRocco moves now and takes Jeremy McGrath out of podium position. So it's McGrath who slides back to fourth, and LaRocco goes back. He's a 17 year pro, Mike LaRocco. He's 33 years of age. And he's still got something in the tank. Jeremy McGrath clearly sits in fourth place. But anything in the top five for him is win-win as we go on board with Ricky Carmichael. Look at that lap time of 56-6. Well, here's how we did it as we look at the start one more time. This is our Butterfinger Crisp hole shot. Carmichael in the middle held his line, Cameron. 
He definitely did, and he had a he had a great line there. But Michael Byrne had an excellent jump. He just got hit, went a little bit wide there. It looked like Chad Reed, his fellow Australian, got into him just a little bit and pushed him wide. So Ricky Carmichael now into lap traffic, 57 just ahead of him, and that is Eric Vallejo. So he's got issues that he's got to work around, but as long as he keeps those lap times where he is, as I pointed out, his lead over Chad Reed is a good 12 seconds. And Chad Reed at this point, I mean, he's got to keep pushing, but he needs, he needs a problem from Ricky Carmichael. And take a look there, Kevin Windham after that big crash he had. He's running well right now. Kevin Windham currently running in sixth place at number 14, Amstel Chaparral Honda. Ricky Carmichael, though, has been unbelievable. And if he wins tonight, Cameron, he could be the first rider ever to win in Anaheim on three brands. And that would be a great feat. As we check in quickly with Jamie Lewis. Well, Todd, it was bad news for Kevin Windham. He got off the line in 17th. Remember, he had that big get off. He's feeling very tired. Remember, he is the series points leader right now. But I have a feeling Ricky Carmichael's going to shake things up. Look at this battle going on. Number 12 is David Villeman trying to slide on the inside of Michael Byrne. And Byrne's been battling the flu. He has been sick for over a week, just, just feeling run down, not really able to put everything he has into it. David Villeman's last lap dropped to a 59.04, but Michael Byrne was up in the top three for a while, and I'm sure that's the effects of the flu right now, as he has gone 12 hard laps. His body just giving everything he's got right now. Kevin Windham now getting ahead of Jeremy McGrath. We talked about Jeremy's fitness level. Remember, folks, he is not riding full-time the full circuit. So a lot of his folks have just been doing well in Southern California and some of the other stops. McGrath, though, has slid back to fifth place. Windham has moved up to fourth. And Kevin Windham is doing himself proud, Cameron, because he is the points that are coming into this. He needs to get on the podium to south. He definitely does. He doesn't want to have Richard Carmichael get any breathing room on him whatsoever. We are in Anaheim, California. It's the 250 main event as Kevin Windham goes through one more time. We are scheduled for 20 laps. Stick around as we go on board with Heath Boss. Your running order, Carmichael Reed LaRocco. Welcome back to Anaheim, California. A great battle now brewing on for third as Mike LaRocco is getting pressure from the overall points that are coming into this event. Number 14, Kevin Wynn. Todd Harris along with Cameron Steele and Jamie Little. Mike LaRocco, who just got a pass on Jeremy McGrath, now has his foot hands full with Kevin Windham. And look at the speed Windham has through that section. Kevin Windham, I mean, he carries speed everywhere. I mean, he, the riders talk about Kevin's style and ability in the pits more than any other rider as he goes underneath and they both clear the jump, keeping it fair and safe. They're both ride for, well, not exactly the same team, but they're teammates. Honda, exactly. So Kevin Windham moves into a podium position. He's in third. And remember, he is on top of the points lead. If he had not finished on the podium or down the back, Ricky Carmichael would open up a gap. It's something he does not want to let happen. Currently sits in third. Mike LaRocco in fourth. Does Mike LaRocco have anything? We'll find out momentarily. If it went down the way it was, Carmichael would have a three point lead. As we come down to the final five laps, Kevin Windham in third, Ricky Carmichael in first, and Chad Reed sits in second. And for Chad Reed, Cameron, it's got to be a night of what could have been. Definitely, and, and you know Chad was looking to pass Ricky. He was trying to get the momentum to maybe dive inside in one of those next corners. And just a tough break for Chad, who's been, you know, actually very calm and, and very collected through the storm of having a problem in the first round. He keeps saying, I just got to work the plan, a race for the championship, we'll, we'll get the wins, things will happen. It's a long series. Number two is Jeremy McGrath. He currently sits in fifth place. 27 is Nick Way. 26 is Michael Byrne. And there's your battle. McGrath, Byrne, and Way. And I think of the three of those, the freshest has got to be Nick Way. As you pointed out, Michael Byrne has the flu. Jeremy McGrath. I don't know if he's given us his best 15 laps so far, but we'll see if he's got anything left in the last four. Nick Way looks like he's just moving up to three o'clock one at a time. Nick Way has been great with his fitness. He's been consistently charging at the end of races. He is in the mix at all times, and, and he's running right now fifth in the points, and that's a great spot for him to be. I really think you're right. He will be the rider making the push here out of these three. He may be able to get past both of these. And Denny Stevenson, who joined us for heat number two, made a great point. If Nick Way not having a factory ride, maybe one of the biggest injustices on the circuit right now. But Nick Wade doing his talking on the track as Nick Wade battles it out with Jeremy McGrath and Michael Byrne for fifth place. 
as we move up to third place. And Kevin Windham sits there just ahead of him. Chad Reed and Ricky Carmichael, your leader. Kevin Windham had that bad accident, and he still hasn't gotten away from Michael Rocco. He hasn't. You see the Rocco blitzing the whoops. That's what we were seeing Kevin Windham doing earlier in the day. And now it looks like he's gone to a, a different style. He's, he's going through there as a rhythm section, maybe, because of the way he crashed. Well, it's been a long day for these guys, regardless of your fitness level or if you have the flu like Michael Byrne. These guys get here before noon for riders meeting, then track walk, and then they start a whole series of double practices. So as it comes up on evening hours, these guys have been here for a long time. But Mike Morocco, the only athlete ever to win a Supercross race in three different decades, the 125 and 250 class in the 80s, 90s, and now 2000, riding for four different brands of bikes. So he is the pitcher of longevity. He's amazing. Oh, I mean, he can do, he gets hope to guys like us in our 30s, Cameron. Now we talked about LaRocco's tough finish last week, tangling with David Villeman. People were talking about Villeman taking him out on purpose. That's not what happened. David Villeman got a little squirrely, came out across the track, and just collected Michael Rocco. Kevin Windham currently holding down third as things have started to settle just a little bit, but Mike LaRocco's job is not done. He desperately wants to get back on a podium, Cameron, because he was here in Anaheim 1 and was on the podium when Kevin Windham won that race. And coming up just a little short on that end triple section there, you saw him put the cases, the frame rails on the motorcycle and that. That's not going to be a good way to keep your momentum flying. And the riders have been talking about it. This has been a difficult track. And we mentioned the top, the top of the show. It's not, it's not a bad track. It's just interesting because the way the flow is set up, you don't get into a really good rhythm at times. It, it has little sections that are tough to negotiate and little sharp edges. Well, Michael Rocco continues to persevere as we talk about his great career and how he's just so steady and continually moving forward. He currently sits in fourth place here in the 250 main event as we come down to the final two laps. Ricky Carmichael got the whole shot and has led throughout, had pressure for the first three or four laps from Chad Reed until he went down. But after that, it has been all Carmichael as Michael Rocco continues to move his way through lap traffic. And Mike says, as long as I'm still competitive, I don't see any reason to quit. And I know a lot of other guys would like to see him quit as we go back to the battle for fifth. And there's Nick Wade. We talked about how fresh he is. He is moving up now on Jeremy McGrath. And nowhere to be seen there is Michael Byrne. He slipped back to eighth place. So the big question mark here, can McGrath hang on to that top five with Way breathing down his neck? And wow, look at the great run Way has in that section. Jeremy is going to be protecting his lines. I'm obviously, probably the smartest Supercross rider of all time. So the white flag is out on the 250 main event. Jeremy McGrath, will he finish on the podium? Doesn't look like it, but top five would be phenomenal. The last time Ricky Carmichael won in Anaheim, this is an interesting note, was January 18th of 2003, almost two years ago. And so while we go on board with the leader, the victory in Phoenix was sweet. This one may be sweeter as Ricky Carmichael returns to the top of the podium in Anaheim. And I got a feeling we're going sideways with Carmichael. For sure, and you can see the little chop-ups out there catching him a bit. He's having a good time. Your winner in Anaheim, 250 main, Ricky Carmichael. As the rest of the riders come through, a little more subdued than he was in Phoenix with Cameron, I think he feels fantastic. And I know Roger DeCosta does as well. As the battle rages on for that fifth place position, Nick Wade trying to track down McGrath. And the itch to see if Jeremy can hold him off. Meanwhile, Chad Reed comes through and wonders what could have been. We'll find out when we come to Anaheim. We'll talk to all three members of the podium after this. Welcome back to Angel Stadium, Anaheim, California, at the conclusion of the 250 main event. Moments ago, this was a scene, Jeremy McGrath holding off Nick Way, capturing his fifth place. There are your Honda official results, Carmichael Reed, Wyndham LaRocco, and McGrath. With that, let's send it down to the podium and Jamie Little. Well, Todd, I give the Hard Charger Award to Kevin Wyndham on the entire night. Kevin, you go down. We don't know. You look a little dizzy to me before you went out and raced tonight. Then you start 17th and make it all the way to the podium. How are you feeling right now, and how did you make this happen? It was just a tough ride. You know, I I, uh, I don't know how I did it, to be honest with you. I mean, I was I was tossing around the idea, should I ride, should I not? I was dizzy. Uh, I didn't really get knocked out, or so I thought, but I just wasn't all in it. So I went out in the, heat, uh, the semi, rode the best I could. Uh, got obviously a bad start and just went out there and tried to do the best I could. I mean, every time I thought about, you know, the night and what had happened, I just thought about the points and, uh, you know, I come out here without the lead, but, uh, oh, well, you know, it's a long season and, you know, it's just not time to roll over and play dead. So it uh, feels good to uh, be charging through the whole pack and 
through the night and it feels good to be able to uh, make it up here on the podium. Cameron, it's now time for our Nissan turning point in the 250 class. Well, it had to be Chad Reed getting the bad timing there, catching the front end, diving, watch him dive. Over the obstacle, a tough break for Chad Reed. That was the turning point. Let's set it down to Jamie Little. Well, Chad Reed wanted tonight to be the night that he took home the win, but accidents happened, and Chad, you were on, Ricky. You guys had a great battle, but what happened? You know, I felt like I was in a good position and then uh, just trying to put the good laps together, and it felt great out there. You know, this week I uh, changed a lot of stuff with the bike and, you know, basically just went back to baseline from, uh, near from last year. So, uh, you know, it was good. Everybody worked so hard this week, and uh, including myself, and, it uh, definitely sucks to go out like that, but, you know, we're, we're a strong team. We'll stay strong, and just want to thank all the guys out there, you know, guys at Yamaha, Thor, Parts Unlimited, at Nice, and, uh, and Amps Mobile for sure. And, uh, you know, we're going to get a one of these one day. We'll keep chipping away and keep trying. It all culminates in Las Vegas, Nevada on May 7th, the official destination of Supercross. As we check our points, first on the THQ World Supercross GP, it's Ricky Carmichael who dominated our first two stops in Canada, followed by Mike Morocco and Nick Way. And then on the THQ AMA side, again, it's Ricky Carmichael who is standing by with Jamie. Well, this is the first time Suzuki has led the 250 points since 1997. Ricky getting it done, your second win now. Take us through your battle with Reed before he went down. You know, uh, we got a one-two start, and uh, we are going back and forth, and I would pull a little bit, he would gain on me, and uh, he made a mistake in the whoop de doos over there. You know, I was trying to hold a good pace for him, and, uh, you know, just uh, excited to put the Suzuki up top again. Ricky is such a true competitor. The first thing he says is, I hate to win like that. Yeah. Loves the good battles back and forth. Guys? So Anaheim 2 goes into the history books, and Ricky Carmichael wins yet again. On behalf of Jamie Little and Cameron Steele, I'm Todd Harris saying good night from Southern California. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Your winner, Ricky Carmichael.